Good morning and welcome to this episode of Superior Angling. Don't mind the scratchy voice, got a little bit of that uh, lake trout sickness going on. But we are here on Lake Superior. It's cold, it's windy, it is May. This is, you hope for warmer conditions in May. And maybe if it wasn't so cold, we wouldn't be uh, having a little bit of a, the lake trout flu here. But uh, yeah, it's we're out here on Lake Superior. We're gonna be fishing structure today targeting that deeper water, that 100 to 200 foot depth. Again, our water temps are still 36, 37, 38 degrees. The majority of your fish, especially on cloudy days like today, are gonna be deeper. So um, the forecast showed lighter winds and more sun than this, um, but that's not what we're given. So you never really know the conditions out here on Lake Superior, but we are taking some time to auto chart this piece of structure that we're on right now. Um, it. Uh, the Navionics app will get you close to kind of the, the structure that, that it shows. You know, we get a lot of questions like, how do you, Grant, how do you find structure out there? Like, what do you, what do you do? Well, your Navionics app is going to show quite a bit of that, but a lot of times it's not even close to being accurate. It'll give you a, a, a general idea or a sense. For instance, it says we're in, you know, 500 feet right here, and we just came off a nice, a nice shelf that was, you know, 100, 100 feet on, on the top of it. So, um, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll give you a decent idea as to, you know, the structure that exists in the area, but you really got to auto chart it, especially if you're jigging, try to graph those fish, drop a few waypoints and see, uh, kind of see what, see what's down there. So we're going to, again, we're targeting that, that little bit deeper water depth. It's early in the season. A lot of your fish are going to be deep. So let's, uh, drive around a little bit, drop some waypoints and see what today has in store for us. Stick with us. It's going to be a good one. identified a group of fish on the graph there's like three or four fish right now which is a very good sign so I got a spot locked hopefully the trolling mortar can hold us here again it's super super windy very difficult fishing conditions um, I mean my hands are numb it's cold but lake trout man they're worth it so I mean the graph is loaded it should be like first drop we should be able to get a fish in the first 15 20 seconds I hope so what we got here are our jigging rods. These are kind of the two, <clears throat> two main jigging rods I like. This Premier rod is probably one of my favorite um, kind of uh, jigging rod for targeting that deeper depth, that 100 to 200 foot depth. So this is the 8.6 medium heavy Premier. Um, you know, ideal for jigging bondies and jigging heavier lures in that five to 10 ounce range. And one reason why I like the Premier is because it has a kind of a, a slower action than like a Legend Tournament. So like a Legend Tournament has a, I, mean, I just feel like these are a little bit slower rods and that's good to absorb kind of the, the weight of that lure when you're jigging it and absorb those head shakes with the, with the fish. I just kind of like a rod that's a little bit more soft when I'm fishing deep. So we're gonna tie on a, a Bondi like this color doesn't really matter too much um, yes elite dark lures yes elite white you can never go wrong with white but we just got you know heavy main line here your 50 pound braid down to 40 pound test floral leader to this so you want heavy gear um, you know if you're using 20 pound test line you're gonna break off a lot of these bondies just because your line and you know casting them and jigging them it's not gonna be able to hold up so make sure you have heavy enough gear heavy swivels there's big fish down there so all right, so we got our bait on. We got a fish on the graph. Let's get this down there and uh, see if we can uh, see a fish here in the first, I don't know. Usually when you graph them like that, you're gonna catch them in the first 15, 20 seconds once your bait gets down there. So let's see if this fish eats. All right, here we go. Down she goes. It's also nice, this is a, a Dakota. A lot of times you don't need a line counter when you're vertical jigging, but 
it is nice to have in case you see a suspended fish you kind of know what depth you're at so like if you're in if you're in 150 feet and you see a fish down there 100 feet just watch this line counter and you know when you're getting close to 100 be ready for that fish to eat so a lot of times they'll you know they'll shoot up and just kind of kind of helps give you a, give you a little sense of, of mind or kind of where your lure is in the water column as it falls down because it takes a while to get down there when you're fishing deep like this it is windy 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 cold lake superior though it's <laughs> lake superior giveth and taketh here we go first couple jig strokes i always kind of have my highest hopes of catching a fish in those first couple jig strokes i'm hoping that one of your graphing is still down there if he doesn't want to eat i'm sure there's plenty more to be caught Fish, huge fish, huge fish, huge fish. Oh my gosh, this feels like a heavy fish. Oh, oh. oh my God, it's going, it's going, it's going. I can't do anything. My heart's pumping. We didn't get the hook set on camera just because it's so wavy and windy. We can't have the camera on the tripod or anything. I dropped down. I don't even think it touched bottom and the rod just doubled over. Oh, this is gonna be a good one, I think. This thing feels like a halibut. My heart's racing. This is like, I, I, just, yeah, I don't know what to say, man. I don't know what to say. It's cold, it's windy. Got the lake trout sickness. <laughs> we got a big fish on, man. We got a big fish. All right, man, she's getting close. She's getting close. It's gonna be a good fish. How big, I don't know. You never know until you see them. If it was sunny and calm, we'd see it by now, but it's cloudy and windy. It's all of 15, 20 pounds, I'll tell you that much. There it is, I see color. I see it down there. That's gonna be a good fish. That's gonna be a good fish. We're gonna have to do a solo net job on this one. Yeah, look at that trout, man. Oh, she's going, she's going. She's going. That's a beautiful lake trout. All right, let's get her in the net. There we go, man. Holy cow. Oh, a good one. Not a giant, but that's a good fish. Well into that 15 pound range. Oh, I thought at first, well, I thought we were hooked into Loch Nessie. I mean, I just couldn't get her off bottom. I had her hooked a little bit funky where she had more leverage than a normal fish would. That's why it fought a little bit harder, but that's a heck of a trout. Let's take a look at her. Look at this lake trout, man. Look at that fish. That's a big one. That's a big one. <laughs> look at that. Cool fins on her. That's a heavy, heavy fish. Not that long, but super thick, super heavy, big fins. That is awesome. Mwah. Give her a big old kiss on this cold May day, man. It's nasty out here, but the lake trout are biting. And who cares what the weather's like when you're catching fish like this? I love it. All right, let's get this girl back. Water's cold, she's gonna release good. Look at that, right down. No hesitation. That water like stings your hands, it's so cold. What do you do though? You make do with the conditions that you're given. You can't control the weather out here on Lake Superior. I mean, it's, it's nasty out here. So we rigged up two rods. That was on the Mojo Muskie rod. We had a, I initially put down my Premier rod with that kind of like that silvery colored bait and I didn't get touched. So we grabbed the Mojo rod and I threw this black one with the kind of the colored flakes on it. And I don't even, honestly don't even think it got to bottom. Look at that. You do not need white to catch lake trout. Kind of half of my theory is if a hungry lake trout sees your bait, it's gonna bite no matter what. So that's what it took. Crazy, that's so cool. So cool, I love Lake Superior.
fish, 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 fish. This feels like a good one too. This feels like a good one too. <laughs> you can't make this up. It doesn't get any better. Oh, I'm freezing. I can't even talk. And we're just pounding the lake trout. How fun is this? It feels like a big one too, man. It feels like a big one too. That bait again, I got down the bottom, I jigged like two times and boom. I grabbed the fish on the bottom too. So the majority of the time, it's either gonna like swim up and hit you on your way down, or it's gonna hit, hit you within those first couple jig strokes. And what I like to do is just let that bondy bait free fall into bottom. So in pretty much every single time, when you go to jig again, there's gonna be weight there. Like I'm not sitting there like, my arm's sore. Yeah, I'm not like sitting there waiting to feel a tap or anything like that. It's just big, big jig strokes and just let that bondy bait free fall into bottom. And then when you go to jig again, there's weight and that's a fish. That's 99% of the time that's how they hit. We're gonna get a look at it soon. I have 20 feet on my line counter. You wanna grab me that net? That's another nice fish, man. Not a giant, but another nice fish. Prehistoric looking. They're just, they're just so old and so like, the water out here is so cold. These fish grow so slow. I mean, any lake trout you catch off, you know, that's over 10 pounds could very well be 20, 30, 40 years old. And a lot of these fish have never seen a lure in their life. You know, they just live on these humps and reefs out here on Lake Superior, swimming around. A lot of these lake trout that we're jigging up here will live in water that's two, three, four, five, even up to a thousand feet of water lake trout live in right on the bottom. So, you know, who knows what, what history this fish has or uh, what depth it's inhabited, but it was on this 120 foot hump that I, there's a lot of fish down there. Let's take a look at this one. Whoa. Oh, look at that lake trout. Man, is that cool, huh? Big old belly on her. See that skinny tail? Like her tail right here is super skinny. That's just that, you know, that's just that species of lake trout that live deep. Look at how big her top fin is right here. That tells you that this is a fish that spends a lot of time in the very deep water. And we're talking deep. Like I, I presume that 120 feet is shallow for this fish where it lives most of the year. So super fortunate to catch this fish. Let's uh, take a picture because I love the way this one looks and we're gonna get her back. All right, girl, there you go. There she goes. <laughs> they don't need much, uh, much help being released when water temps are this cold. So, you know, yes, we're catching them out of 120, 130 feet, but that's just fine. They release perfectly with this colder water temp. So, and even jigging, you do bring these fish up a little bit slower anyways versus trolling. So um, you pretty much have zero, zero fish mortality this time of year and kind of this way of, of fishing. So that's two fish in about three minutes. I'm stoked. That, uh, that makes you not think about the weather and how cold and nasty it is right now. It's starting to rain a little bit. My hands are numb, but this is totally worth it. Another thing to do is that can really help you kind of graph fish. If you graph fish when you're fishing deep structure, it's going to be good. Like you don't always graph them and it's pretty uncommon not to graph them. But when you do graph fish, they're probably going to eat. So what I like to do is like right now, here's a really good example is that we're in 115 feet of water, but I zoomed in on my chart. So I zoom in on like the bottom 30 feet. If I had this in full scale mode, I would not see that fish on bottom right there. So um, you really want to like take your Lowrance or whatever graph you have, zoom in on the bottom. Cause a lot of these lake trout hold really tight to bottom and you're not going to see them if your graph is at full scale in deep water, you know, hundred to 200 feet of water. So zoom in, it's going to give you a better idea if there's fish down there or not. And I mean, that's really why 
you know, that's really what I look for. And if you graph fish like we just did here, you can count, you can bet that you're going to catch one. All right, just dropping down here. There's bottom. No, nope, there's fish. <laughs> <laughs> this is incredible. Oh, this is so much fun. And now it's like legit raining out. This feels like a good one. I just got to bottom. Oh my gosh. If this rain keeps up, we might have to put the cameras away a little bit. But what madness. I can't lift this one. Sometimes you can have them hooked a little bit funky and they have more leverage than uh, they normally would. But you never know. I mean, this could. there's big fish down there, man. There's big fish. When you're not feeling good, you get a little bit sick. Sometimes the best prescription is some more lake trout. Ooh, it gets you. It gets you feeling good. Oh, that's a big one, man. Yeah, that's a big trout. That's a dinosaur. That's a dino. That's getting up there into that 38, 39 inch range. That's what you come here for. That's the big girl. That's the big girl. Whoa! I could use a I could use a net man every now and then. Oh, that's another nice part. So we have our musky mag net from RS Nets, which is nice if you got a guy netting your fish. But if you're the only one for big lake trout, even the solo slimer is completely manageable by yourself. This is a big, big fish. It's our biggest yet this morning, and. <laughs> Let's get this girl out of the net and look at her. That top fin is just massive. Let this wave pass here. All right, here we go. Come here, big girl. Whoa. Look at that fish. That's a big, big lake trout. Easy, girl. Easy, girl. Easy, easy, easy. Look at that fish. What a giant. A Lake Superior giant, that is. Ice cold water, big lake trout, ice cold weather, too. Oh, mixed in with a little, little bit of, a little bit of flu, some lake trout remedy. I love it, man. Look at this fish, big, 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 big. Let's get this back. There she goes, old fish, man. You got to respect them. You got to release them. There's no reason to keep a fish like that. Release them. Let them go. Let them grow. They're gonna, for, they're gonna live on for. I don't know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. You never know. They can get old. So that's awesome. What a start. I'm already exhausted. I'm drenched. I'm freezing. This is awesome, though. A good one so it hasn't even been but probably two three minutes since grant got his last one up and uh we marked a few more on the graph and decided to drop right back down and within 30 seconds we hooked up again this is incredible it's it's worth it fighting these cold conditions and and the waves and getting out here but this fishing is incredible just now this is uh oh here it comes oh this is another nice fish so that's big that's big nice nice what a great fish first one for me so this is fantastic today um we're gonna get take a look at this girl and and get her out of the net here and let her go she looks really good and healthy still oh what a great looking fish this is just wild Whenever we get to a spot and we mark fish, we drop down and it's it's less than five seconds and they just hammer it. They just crush it. Almost feels like you're hooked on something on the bottom and then it's the fight's on and just spectacular fish after spectacular fish. This is just uh, really neat. So we'll get this uh, 
good looking fish back in the water and let her have another day. driving around I know you know when we do get set up on a, on a spot and spot lock like we make it look really easy but kind of behind the scenes it's, it's not there's kind of a lot that goes into it and the skill out here is it's not catching the fish like catching the fish is like the easiest part anybody anybody can do it I mean anybody can do what we're doing here today but the work comes in and number one just kind of taking a chance and finding some structure offshore and number two just drive around to you graph your fish like there's there's no point in fishing when you're not graphing a fish kind of under these circumstances and scenario that we are today so I want to see big marks that are 5 10 15 feet off bottom because as we've seen those fish are gonna hit you instantly so I'm taking you know I'll take an hour literally an hour right now to drive around and graph fish I'd rather do that than sit on the spot in this jig there because I get bored and I just can't sit there if I you know if I know that there's no fish beneath us so um, I just like to drive around make a cool contour map we have these contours now forever so i honestly i've never fished a spot in my life so um it's kind of cool getting this figured out seeing what the contours are like seeing what the contours are doing but kind of the moral of the story here is behind the scenes there's a lot that goes on to catching fish instantly when your bait gets to the bottom and that's you know just driving around until you graph a fish and properly setting up on them all right so we're right about at where these fish are there they are on the graph right there, so I'm just going to hit spot lock, turn off our engine. So we're pointed into the wind, our boat's going to be pretty, pretty well positioned. We grab our rod, we drop it down, and we hang on because I'm guessing these baits aren't even really going to have a chance to get to bottom. I mean, look at that, it's loaded. So we're going to drop this, so it takes a little bit to get down there. Pretty shallow, I mean 117 feet, that's relatively shallow in the grand scheme of things. So. I, uh, I, I had imagined we're going to get bit right away. 50 feet on the line counter. This wind, you think it lets up, but then it starts blowing again. It, uh, you got to be careful out here too. Watch the wind, especially early season like this. It kind of does some unpredictable things. So you got to be careful, careful about that. But when you can get out here and you know, find structure like this and find fish like this, it's such a blast. We're at 100 feet here on the line counter. Here's my bait. There's a fish coming up to it, kind of. So I, I presume we're gonna get, uh, we're gonna get eaten here, and it's fish on. So I mean, that's that's how it goes. It's just, it's oh, he come off, bummer. That felt big too. That felt big. He might eat again, but it's it's automatic when you graph him like that. So it's I didn't even I barely got. To, I don't even think I got to bottom. So. It's a good thing when you when you graph fish like that. It's a bummer that one came off because that felt heavy, but um, there he is again. So we got him again. That feels like a good one. And there's really no need, there's big head chicks. With these bondies too, really, you don't need to set the hook per se. Um, you know, the, the bait's so heavy itself. And when you jig, that's pretty much essentially your, uh, your hook set. If you're really ripping it to set the hook, you're gonna lose a lot of fish just because you rip, you know, you're gonna rip those hooks right out of its face. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Graph a fish, drop it down, get bit instantly, it gets off. Two seconds later, we get bit again. That's what I love about Lake Superior and putting forth the effort to number one, locate a structure like this, but number two, locate fish as well. You definitely reap the rewards and reap the benefits. That one's got, that one's got some thickness. <laughs> Man, it's just awesome. I love it out here. There's nothing better in my mind. Look at this fish. Look at that. <laughs> that's a big old, that's a big old belly. She's got some air in there yet. She didn't really burp herself too well on the way up. So we're gonna help her burp and help her get back down. But what a fish. A lot of these lake trout that live on reefs like this are so, you know, they have big bellies on them and their tails are skinny. So they are so unique, so cool. Every fish is different and they are so special, man. Put forth the effort to drive around, graph fish, find some, you know, find some reefs, find some humps, take a chance, deal with the weather. Who cares if it's cold because you can catch fish like this. That's awesome.